Okay, so good day class. Um, welcome to the part 3 of our lecture again. This is part of your cellular aberration. It's um, just a con continuation of your nursing management. This is your part 4, part 3, I mean, which is assisting in grieving. So um, when you say grieving, it's um, contemplating or anticipation of a something that is lost. Okay, so this one, you encourage the verbalization of peers concerns and negative feelings this is what i've emphasized later that um you're there to be therapeutic or use therapeutic communication that's why encouragement verbalization of peers concerns and negative feelings and questions is there for treatment and future implications this is where your active listening comes in and then next is participate in participation of the family active participation of the family in the care and treatment of decisions because later on when they would be managing the patient or the client at home uh, the family support is really needed especially for his or her uh, grievance or um, in times of the patient when is he or she is sad okay so visit family frequently this is um, also communicating and um, providing strong family ties and support Next one is involve spiritual advisor as desired by the family or patient. Because in these times, prayers and all the support that um, the person needs must be given and provided to the patient in order to promote spirituality and assist in grieving or uh, what they call this uh, sense of loss. Okay, let me just turn off again my camera. I'll just switch to the slide only. Okay, there. Then here is progression through the grieving process in the individualized phase. Okay, so not all people move on the same. That's why we have to uh, give them um, time in their individualized phase. So professional counseling as indicated. For example, the patient is already depressed and he or she needs some professional help. That's why we need to use this one as professional counseling. Next one is assist in acknowledgement of terminal phase of illness, coping, reactions, and feelings. So this one is a little bit hard, especially what I have uh, also told you. Being an oncological nurse is really um, heartbreaking at times because you know, your condition, the condition of the patient is um, not always um, good. Okay, so here... As a nurse, you acknowledge the terminal phase of the illness. For example, um, give him, um, treat him still as an individual despite having terminal phase of the illness or having um, problems or feeling um, when in pain. So assist and acknowledge. Be there for the patient. Okay? And then last but not least is Maintain eye contact with the surviving family members after the death. If ever the death would come in because of uh, complications due to the condition, maintain contact with the surviving members of the family even after death of the patient. This one um, shares, you share the connection for the family. Because sometimes um, after, especially the mga nurses nagiging busy sila right after, they disregard um, the family members right after so it's good to have communication still and assist them with their grieving process okay next one I'm sorry okay so this one is for nursing management we have uh, monitoring and managing of potential communication so when uh, the patient has cancer or is undergoing radiological therapy automatically the there is decrease in the immune system okay so management of infection must be strictly observed next one if ever there would be loss of fluid or bleeding it may lead to septic shock that's why management of septic shock or in sorry let me just correct that phrase let me just cut it's not um loss of fluids but septic shock is usually secondary to infection okay so sepsis or uh, infection is spread towards the bloodstream therefore um making the patient prone on being susceptible to shock okay 
And then later on, this one would be the bleeding and hemorrhage, especially if the patient has um, bleeding disorders and uh, problem with uh, leukemia. Or later on, diba yun nga, if the area of tumor had perforated and infected a large amount, the patient is at risk for bleeding. That's why you have to watch out for fluid loss or hemorrhage. Okay, so I just went back here. Okay, so managing for infection, okay? So uh, assess the evidence for infection. What would a nurse do? Surely you would be checking the vital signs every four hours. If there is increase and decrease in thermoregulation, usually increase in thermoregulation may indicate signs of infection. Also, when monitoring your laboratories, what would you monitor for? Check if there is increase or decrease in WBC and differentials daily as prescribed differential count daily as prescribed by the physician okay so note for sites that may be end transports for pathogens for example puncture sites like iv wounds skin folds bony prominences the perineum and our oral cavity so those are um, the regions that you would watch out for infection so if ever the patient is immunocompromised when we say immunocompromised um his resistance is really low, therefore making him or her susceptible for uh, infection, you place the patient in reverse isolation. Okay, this is a private room that is um, restricted with people to avoid communicable infection for that patient. You're reverse isolating him. Uh, you're protecting the patient from other um, people who may cause infection. Okay, do hand hygiene. Avoid rectal and vaginal procedures and IM injection. So, uh, stimuli or uh, what they call this um, procedures that can cause introduction of pathogens. So, we avoid that. Okay, so and last but not least, insertion of urinary catheter. So, this one is also an apparatus where microorganisms may thrive. If ever you need to use catheters, just observe strict septic technique. Okay. Next one. Okay. So for example, your patient has uh, under your patient is um, undergoing septic shock due to infection. Okay. So you assess frequently for the infection and inflammation through the course of disease by your laboratories and by assessing your patient okay next one is prevent septicemia and septic shock detect and report for prompt treatment okay so what are the signs and symptoms for septic shock you have decrease in your blood pressure decrease in urine output and cardiac manifestations And increase in temp. We should do this one are the four um, things to observe when the patient is going into shock. Okay, next one instruct the family about the signs of septicemia, the methods in preventing it, and the actions to take if ever there is um, infection. Okay, so usually um, instruct the patient's relatives if ever there is increase in temperature or fever. For a prolonged period of time, there is sudden drop in BP, na constant. Urine output is affected and also cardiac manifestations like increase in heart rate initially and then grow, uh, slowing down uh, suddenly. So report accordingly. Okay, so blood managing bleeding and hemorrhage. So this one is fluid losses. So when you have losses, what do you have to do? Siyempre, you have to ano, monitor the losses by monitoring the platelet count and assess for bleeding watch out for bleeding precaution this one is um your oral care Parang, uh, you don't want to initiate any um form of bleeding that's why you instruct for uh, using soft bristle of toothbrush you avoid um, physical contact and uh, other activities that may elicit um, wound or trauma or injury because reading bliss uh, risk for bleeding and then uh, initiate measures to minimize bleeding okay 
so what what's for you to watch out as a nurse so at least uh, watch out that your platelet count must not be less than 20,000 millimeters to the third okay and then bed rest with padded side rails why does it have to be padded okay because uh metal side rails when the patient bumps to the those side rails it might cause bruises or bleeding since the patient is risk for bleeding those bruises may later on uh, turn to bleeding uh, another problem is there's opening in the skin so skin breakdown possible entry for pathogen so uh, by padding your um, side rails it helps you keep the patient free from bleeding tendencies avoidance of strenuous activities why strenuous? Because when, um, uh, when doing strenuous activities, there's a risk of the patient um, doing valsalva or uh, sa Tagalog, iire. So by, by making those valsalva maneuver, there's increased pressure in uh, some parts of your body that may cause to um, sudden burst or bleeding. That's why we avoid strenuous activities. And last but not the least, as a collaborative part, we do replacement by platelet transfusion as prescribed by the physician or other blood components as prescribed. Next. Okay. Cancer surgery. This one is uh, what we have discussed in the other slides. Okay. If ever you're going, the patient is undergoing a procedure to remove the tumor or cancer cell or cancer or malignant tumor, what I mean, we assess and help out with a thorough preoperative assessment of the patient, okay? Assist the patient and family in dealing with possible changes and outcomes after the surgery. Explain and clarify the information to the physician that has provided regarding uh, the procedure, if ever, ask, okay? So communicate frequently. Uh, mode of communication is always um, important here. We assess the response to the surgery and monitor for complications like bleeding, um, infection, okay, early signs of infection like that. We provide post-operative teaching to assess wound care, activity, nutrition, and medication. And last but not the least, this is all self-explanatory. We initiate the discharge planning to follow up care and treatment and to ensure continuity of care. So the care must not stop on the hospital and from you, but instead, it must continue on until the patient gets home. Next slide. Another thing is radiation therapy. If ever your patient goes through radiation therapy, what would be the nurse's responsibilities or what would the nurse do? So, for example, here, it's more of uh, educating and giving health teaching to the patient. So, first, answer the question about the effects of radiation on other tumors and on normal tissues and organ. Here, it, you would be saying that uh, radiation therapy might cause loss of, uh, loss of the hair or alopecia because it affects um, the good cells as well. Okay. And then explain procedure of delivering radiation, what kind of equipment, what kind of drugs, or how the procedure would be going. And then here, we like what I, we have discussed on the previous slide, we assess the skin and oropharyngeal mucosa, nutritional status, and general feeling of well-being for the patient. Okay, assist if the patient is weak or fatigued. Okay and also with personal hygiene and then instruct and provide the radiation safety officer from the radiological department okay the time in the patient's room and if ever shielding and proper disposals and precautions that are need to be done next one continuation for radiation therapy if ever radioactive implant is used so note the restrictions placed on visitors and healthcare personnel. So radioactive implant as a patient or ano, uh, radioactive siya nung time na yun, be of good service to you and other um, healthcare team by endorsing it properly, especially instructing also the relatives of the patient. 
that um, the patient is using radiological or radioactive implants. Okay? So, a radiation precaution na lang din tayo dun. If um, interactively delivery device is used, okay, for the radiation therapy, sorry, we maintain the patient on bed rest. Uh, we use lag roll maneuver or moving the patient as a whole. For example, this is your patient. Okay, lang siya. You roll your patient as a whole unit, okay, when you do turning, okay. And then, um, the low residue diet and antidiarrheal agents and indwelling catheter if necessary kasi you're maintained on bed rest. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so radiation therapy and chemotherapy. Okay, so assess nutritional status and fluid and electrolyte. Encourage fluid intake, <clears throat> nursing assessment, and on identifying and modifying factors that may risk the risk for anemia, infection, and bleeding disorders, and use antiseptic technique and gentle handling. Uh, noted to monitor closely the laboratories and report if ever there are changes significant. Carefully select the peripheral veins to perform venipuncture. So chemotherapy, this one would be using your IV line. So select properly the site that you would be administering the drug. Make sure that the vein is um large and uh, note for any extravasation so when extravasation is uh, a term or termed it means um, your medication is not handled properly by the vein and therefore it goes out of the vein and goes to the nearby skin or tissue so watch out for um, spread of the medication next one so for chemotherapy Okay, so take anti-emetic drugs prior to. Usually, these are pre-medication. They would be giving anti-emetic um, drug like um, Placil. And then, uh, note for reduction of risk of delayed nausea and vomiting for 48 to 72 hours later. Um, usually, they have special anti-nauseating um, drugs given to patients who are under, uh, undergoing chemotherapy. Okay, here, um, we encourage the patient as part of the nutrition, eat small frequent feeding, bland foods, and comfort foods, yung preference usually ng patient. Kasi doing chemotherapy may alter the taste buds of the patient. So, we give them small frequent feedings and bland foods and comfort foods as well. Monitor renal function, watch out for the renal output of the patient. Okay, provide adequate hydration, diuresis, and alkali alkalinization. Okay, so this one is for um, replacement. Okay, when we say hydration, this is your replacement of loss of fluid because sometimes the patient gets um, urges to urinate more and more. Okay, provide diuresis. For example, the patient is fluid overload. You have to diurese the patient avoid congestion or edema and then alkaline alkalinization so this one is buffer for your acidity while on good they're going your chemotherapy so monitor for uh, complications you have your heart failure and pulmonary fibrosis sorry for that guys uh, and potential reproductive changes due to the therapy okay so use of reliable birth control measures and sperm banking okay so this one, uh, health for the patient and family plan for strategics to combat fatigue. Okay, we have also here another nursing management. For example, your patient would be undergoing bone marrow transplant. Okay, so note for any nutritional assessment and extensive physical examinations. Usually, for bone marrow transplantation, the patient would be asked to be... Uh, worked up with the laboratories and physical examinations just to make sure that uh, he or she is fit for the um, procedure itself which is bone marrow transplant okay moving on uh, make sure that there is social support financial support and enough resources for the said condition okay note to have the informed consent 
and provide patient teaching about the procedure. How will it be done? Okay. And how long the procedure would be. Closely monitor signs for acute toxicity and adverse effects. Okay. With this one, high risk for dying from sepsis and bleeding. Support with blood products and hemopoietic growth factors and protect from infection. So this one, let me just emphasize a little bit on this one. Uh, high risk of dying from sepsis since it's an opening and your bone marrow contains the protectors or blood components that is also responsible for sending um, your white blood cells to fight on infection. That's why when it's compromised, uh, you have high risk of having sepsis and bleeding. It's a uh, blood or hematological hematologically rich area because it's a bone marrow so you're also risk for bleeding okay so when we say homopoietic growth factors this is your erythropoietin to induce the growth of your um, red blood cells okay and then usually they would be giving uh, antibiotics as prophylaxis to avoid infection and lastly provide ongoing psychosocial patient assessment okay so we are here, Biologic Response Modifiers, or BRM. If ever your patient is undergoing this kind of treatment or diagnosis, you need to take note of the following. Assess the need for education, support guidance and faith for patient and family. You have to monitor therapeutic and adverse life-threatening side effects. Okay, you also assess in the self-care and assist for providing care. Okay, so uh, note on how to administer BRMs through subcutaneous injections. Okay. So let's move on to um, the male reproductive system. This is your first type of cancer for the male. Okay, so prostate cancer. What is it? It's the um, prostate Ah, sorry, it is the cancer or tumor affecting your prostate area. It's for men, not in women. That's why it's the most common um, cancer in men. Okay. Uh, it is said to be that it is the second most common cause of cancer deaths in American men. Okay. So African American men are most likely to die of prostate cancer than the ma men of any other ethnic or Asian or, or ethnic group okay so what are the risk factors for the patient in developing prostate cancer is increasing in age or usually elderly the family has history of any type of cancer the patient is having high fat diet and the patient is uh, hormonologically unstable or imbalanced endogenous hormones for androgens and estrogens okay <clears throat> so usually it's unsymptomatic in the early stage later on um, during prostate exam there would be a felt nodule or substance in the gland or extensive hardening of the posterior lobe okay of the prostate of each male so for the advanced stage, uh, it, is, it has uh, lesions that are stony, hard, and fixed. It causes uh, sexual dysfunction. It obstructs um, the flow of your genital urinary tract. Okay, so usually the patient would be experiencing frequency or paulit-ulit na pag-ihi, urinary retention, uh, hindi mailabas ang ihi, decrease size and force of the urinary stream. Pag umiihi, di ba, usually may pressure yan ha, pag, sa pag-ihi. Usually, kahit anong pilit mo na lumabas yung ihi, patak-patak lang din yung lumalabas or hindi siya ganun ka lakas or ka um, yun nga, dun, hindi siya ganun ka lakas pag umiihi na sila. So, usually, in the late stage, kung may mga lesions na or may mga sugat na dun sa prostate area, there would be blood in the urine or semen or painful ejaculation usually yun yung um, paglabas ng um, semen sa reproductive or, uh, 
organ ng lalaki. So, therefore, it uh, leads to sexual dysfunction. And noted yan as may spread to the lymph nodes and bone. So, sa mga karatig lugar ng ano, lymph nodes sa chan, usually, makakapayan dyan. At saka, inguinal area, lymph nodes, you would be seeing uh, those. Okay? Next one. Metastatic <coughs> symptoms like back a hip pain, perineal and rectal discomfort, anemia, okay, yun naman yung AWWP, anemia, weight loss, weakness, okay, and pain, yan, surely, AWWP, spontaneous uh, pathologic features, okay, so hematuria from urethra or bladder invasion, okay, so how can one assess if ever the patient has prostate cancer for male patients, usually they do digital rectal examination. Okay. Usually, it's preferred to be by the same examiner. At least, meron siyang baseline nung before. So, uh, here, while doing this exam, a histological examination of the tissue is removed um, surgically. <clears throat> by transurethral resection of the prostate and open prostatectomy ultrasound guided transrectal needle biopsy or fine needle aspiration okay so usually the diagnosis or um, the test used for this for determining if the patient has prostate cancer is your PSA or prostate specific antigen usually the results here would be elevated if you have prostate problems <coughs> Bone scans can also reveal prostate cancer and then also skeletal x-rays and MRIs. So upon doing pelvic CT scan, you may also see enlargement of the prostate and monoclonal antibody-based imaging. Okay. Next. For the management, <coughs> sorry. Um, we have here, based on the patient's life expectancy, symptoms of risk and reoccurrence defined after the treatment. Usually, it would be indicated by the size of the tumor, the Gleason score, the PSA level, and the likelihood of complications and preventive oh, and patient preference, what I mean. Uh, management. The management can raise from uh, non-surgical methods like watchful waiting to the surgery. Okay, so watchful waiting. This one is observing before the patient goes into surgery. Next one. For treatment or for if ever the patient has undergone prostate, prostatic CA, one um, surgery that they could do is doing a radical prostatectomy. When you say prostatectomy, it's the removal of your prostate, the whole prostate gland. Okay, so by this... Um, the prostate would be removed, the seminal vesicles also, and the tip of the vas deferens. Okay. Uh, for short, kinakayo din nila yung surrounding fats, yung nerves, and your vessels. So, so, super sakit din ito, talaga nito. So, the procedure is used with the patient whose tumor is confined to the prostate only. So, kung nandun lang yun sa prostate, yun lang yung ginagawa. And it might cause sexual impotence and various degree of urinary incontinence. Common. So, syempre, um, your vas deferens uh, and seminal vesicles are parts of your reproductive system. Therefore, since they are already altered or removed, therefore, you, the patient, the male patient is unable to produce offspring kasi tinanggal na yung mga nalagyan na ng reproductive system niya. And then there are various degrees of urinary incontinence. Since kinalikot yung prostate na malapit sa bladder and yung daanan ng ihe. Okay, so magkakaroon ng alteration and incontinence dun sa patient. Yung irregularities when you say incontinence. Okay, so we have the approaches in surgery. You have your suprapubic. When you say supra, it means above. And pubic is a region in your gastric. Uh, uh, what they call this in your abdominal wall so above your pubic area okay so this one has the tendency to have greater blood loss and the perennial approach okay 
which is easily contaminated and it's prone to impotence and incontinence and rectal injury as common okay and then retropubic approach this is um the only downside with it is infection can readily start. okay okay we also have radiation therapy for the radiation te therapy we have um, two methods we have the teletherapy the external beam radiation therapy okay um, this is used as options for patients with low risk pro um, prostate cancer and then we have the brachytherapy so this is commonly used with uh, monotherapy treatments for early clinical and organ confined prostate cancer okay for the side effects for this one uh, it would irritate or inflame your rectum bowel and bladder so the, because those are the organs affected and uh, it may cause acute urinary dysfunction hirap umihi yung patient nyo or nahihirapan talaga siya mag force out ng urine kahit may valsalva or pressure Okay, so there would be also pain in urination and uh, releasing of uh, semen for the patient. And then there would be rectal urgency. Usually, pag kinalikot yung bowels mo or the nearby parts, uh, the diarrhea is also expected to follow. Kasi yung rectal sphincter mo is altered right there and then. Okay, there could also be rectal bleeding or fistula. And then sometimes the patient would be bleeding or would be urinating um, blood but it has hematuria with it and the patient doesn't know that's why it's called painless hematuria and then later erectile dysfunction because the nerves and the muscle area of that area is altered na lang din okay moving on to the next we have our hormone therapy so okay for the hormone therapy we, they would be giving androgen um, deprivation therapy. So, from the word itself, this therapy is giving chemicals or hormones that deprives androgen. Kasi androgen is a main component that enlarges the prostate. That's why um, you need a hormone to decrease the androgen inside the, pro inside the body of the patient. Therefore, Increasing the growth, rapid growth of your prostate, especially if there is tumor. That's why they administer it. It's either given by the surgical castration, bilateral orchiectomy, and removal of testes. Okay. So this one, um, there's also a chance of hypogonadism. Okay, so for the adverse effects, it might um, cause vasomotor flushing, loss of libido, decrease in bone density. Okay, so it decreases the bone density. Uh, that may cause to osteoporosis and fracture. You have your anemia, you have your fatigue, you have your decreased muscle mass. Also, since it's hormone, um, gynecomastia or some may say man boobs in guys for guys and mastodynia nipple tenderness since you're undergoing um, hormonal so for other um, therapies like what i've said there's chemotherapy you have your cryosurgery okay for those who cannot physically tolerate surgeries or recurrence they use cryosurgery repeated trps or your transuretral um uh what do you call this sorry <laughs> okay oops sorry okay so repeated drps okay uh the to give the retra patent or without any obstruction there Okay, so we have suprapubic and transuretral catheter drainage and repeated DUR is impractical. So there's also use for 
um, opioid and non-opioid medication. This one is only for the use to control pain with metastasis to the bone. And then later, you have to administer blood transfusion to make uh, or maintain adequate hemoglobin levels and various forms of GAM. Okay, for the assessment, so the nurse would um, have the complete history, emphasis on the urinary function, when did uh, the problem from urination started, uh, have a quick check on the any disorders caused by lifestyle, and then if ever there is, report for urgency, frequency, okay, urgency is sudden uh, need to use the bathroom, frequency is um, multiple times, or mayat maya na pumupunta sa banyo. Nocturia is urination during the night time. Dysuria is having pain with your urination. Urinary retention is um, the urine would be kept and withhold or unable to be uh, flushed out. Okay. For family history, check for cancer, heart disease, and kidney disease, including hypertension. Okay. So. Okay, guys. So. This is um, another thing, nursing management. Um, what you have to do with uh, preoperative care, especially for um, patients who would undergo surgery, your target is to reduce anxiety, okay? Making the patient comfortable about um, the procedure. And, <coughs> sorry, verbalize the learning about prostate and disorder of Perioperative experience. Okay, so that's for your preoperative decrease anxiety, and at the same time, verbalize learning. So more of knowledge, because the more the patient knows about his or her, ah, sorry, this is more about the prostate, about his condition, the more he will be feeling less anxious. Okay, for the postoperative care. Okay, so maintain the fluid volume balance, your losses and your gains, relieve of pain and discomfort, okay, and help the patient to perform mobility or self-care activities and as much as possible, no complications like infection or further bleeding or damage. Sorry, let's go to the next. Okay, so here are the interventions. Here are the ways to reduce anxiety. Okay. So first, clarify the nature of the surgery. What the doctor would be doing. Okay. Provide privacy. And establish trusting and professional relationship or rapport. Okay. Encourage to discuss feelings or emotions. Okay. For um, the relieving of discomfort, this is collaborative. Administer analgesics as a prescribed. Maintain on bed rest, okay, to relieve anxiety. Monitor voiding, because uh, urine output is effect, uh, is altered here, especially after DORP. So you have to monitor for output. Usually this has uh, patients has cystoclysis by this one, so you have to monitor the voiding patterns and as much as possible, avoiding bladder distension, okay. So here, insert, insert the indwelling catheter if urinary retention is present and, and yeah, um, prepare for cystostomy if uh, urinary catheter is not tolerated. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so this is um, for providing instructions. As a nurse, you must review the anatomy of the affected structures and as well as their function, diagram and teaching aid. So. You might be needing your um, uh, teaching strategies for here. So you may use a diagram or a picture for that so that you could explain further. Okay, so this one is usually collaborative as well. Uh, you would be working hand in hand with the surgeon depending on the surgery. Explain what will take place, reinforce the information that is given to the surgeon and provide emotional support. Uh, don't worry, the procedure is safe, but there are still risks, but as much as possible, we would be monitoring you during the procedure and after the procedure. Okay, and pro 
provide post-operative management. Okay, so as you prepare the patient for treatment, okay, um, you must uh, prepare or uh, administer compression stockings and if edema, I'm sorry, administer enema if ordered. So this is bowel cleansing as well. Okay. So this is just um what they call this uh routine okay so these are the post operative intervention and their living care okay maintaining fluid balance we've talked about it monitored electrolyte imbalance this is your sodium potassium okay okay and other chloride and other electrolytes as ordered by the doctor note for um increasing BP this one usually is because of pain discomfort so ask the patient time to time comfort okay so watch out also for confusion and respiratory distress confusion um, because of your uh, pain medication sometimes and respiratory distress because of fluid overload fluid overload so watch out for that one okay so for relieving pain assess the cause and pain of locations, for example, bladder spasm, administer analgesia, output, post of dressing, note for any bleeding, and provide stool softener. Okay. Next. Okay. So, prevention for hemorrhage, watch out for the drain, um, the urine flow, and patency should be at least um, yellowish to clear. For example, right after it might be blood bleed um bloody but later on at least the color improves as much as possible watch out for clots as well if you're the drain the, the patient is on catheter so watch out for vital signs and accurate measurement provide explanation and, and administer medications okay so prevent complications as well okay uh, as we have said earlier, septic technique, avoid rectal thermometers and tubes, provide hot seats, but as for UTI and administer antibiotics. Okay, this one, prevent complication after surgery, assess for DBT or deep vein thrombosis, and also pulmonary embolism, apply compression stockings, assist for progression of activity, encourage ambulation, avoid sitting for a prolonged period of time, and monitor excessive bleeding if receiving heparin. Okay, so this one uh, we have here, uh, if ever there is obstructed catheter, observe the lower abdomen for bladder distension, examine drainage bag or surgical incision for bleeding, vital signs as well, observe for less restlessness, pallor, diaparesis, BP drop and increase heart rate, provide patient drainage and perform genital irrigation to remove plots. Okay, also for uh, patients who are have undergone surgery, note for in urinary incontinence, okay? Encourage to take steps to prevent incontinence, improve incontinence, and anticipate leakage and cope with the lack of complete control. So, you would be telling the patient to do that. Okay. For the nursing education or client education, if they would be going home with the uh, apparatus, how to manage and drain the system, monitor urine output, you wound care, and strategies to prevent complications. Here you have signs and symptoms as well to be reported to the physician. Perineal exercises to uh, exercise or regain urinary control, for example, that's bladder training. Okay, encourage increased fluid oral intake. Uh, for the meantime, especially when the patient has apparatus, yun, yeah, mga sexual dysfunctions and referred for counseling for sex therapist if ever. Avoid valsalva maneuver or straining for 6 to 8 weeks to prevent increase in venous pressure and hematuria. Okay, avoid long car trips kasi prolonged sitting that may cause bleeding. Avoid spicy food, alcohol, and coffee. Okay. So here's, here's um, some patient uh, outcomes. Okay, so we we'll discuss about this one. Okay. Next. 
we would be talking about um, breast cancer okay but before that let me just focus this and we'll just end this video here okay so for the expected outcomes for the pre-operative pre this is before your operation pre-operative before operation okay so at least your patient must demonstrate reduced in anxiety okay uh, at least your patient is um pain scale is lessened how will you assess this ma'am um from the, uh, sorry sir from the scale of one to ten um has your pain scale decreased earlier you said your pain was six over ten how about your pain scale now okay so if she or she, uh, if your patient would grade it lesser so at least it's decrease in pain or discomfort okay so relate um understanding of surgical procedure and post-operative care okay so for post-operative care it relates relief of symptoms or discomfort it exhibits fluid and electrolyte balance okay perform self-care measures free from complications like pain and infection and last but not the least is report understanding of change in sexual functions okay are we okay with that so with that let me end this video and we would be proceeding to the next uh cluster of um, systems under the reproductive of the female so thank you very much guys and have a nice day